Hi, in this video I'll be talking about an element in the Fairlight component of DaVinci Resolve that I think should be added. That element is MIDI. We'll be doing a little bit of a look into MIDI's origins and a technical dive later in the video. If you're already familiar with MIDI, feel free to use the link in the description to skip that section of the video. This video is entirely my personal opinion. Fairlight and Resolve as it currently exists is a fine addition of this suite of products and I have no issue with it in its current state. This video is just about something I'd like to see added. Music represents a key element in the creation of video content. It could set the mood. It can let the viewer know that something's about to happen. Or it can punctuate the action. When creating content for clients, there are many times a client will express a musical preference they might have that they would like to have included. Here's a sample of a promo we created. In Ventura County, you're only moments away from an amazing selection of activities. Beautiful local beaches. Over 20 equestrian centers. The music in this promo is stock music. In most instances, stock music is acceptable to the client and also provides an expeditious path to the completion of the project. There are occasions where we're asked to create a custom music theme for a video, something that is genuinely unique to that project and not a canned song that might appear in another video somewhere. This type of service is provided at a premium to the client. It's very profitable to us, so we're usually very happy to take on the extra work associated with it. Both myself and my partner are experienced musicians, so this type of work is well within the range of services we can provide to a client. With Resolve being our post-production suite of choice, we would prefer it if we were able to do all of our original music creation within the Fairlight module. Unfortunately, due to how we compose and record music, this is not possible. While the editing portion of Resolve is referred to as an NLE or nonlinear editor, the Fairlight portion is referred to as a DAW or Digital Audio Workstation. As with an NLE, there are many competing products in the marketplace that fall into the category of DAW. Products such as Cakewalk, Pro Tools, Reaper, Cubase, Reason, and Logic Pro, among others. Fairlight represents a highly capable DAW product that is focused on providing a tool set that serves the filmmaker. It's focused on recording audio and does an excellent job with that. In this example, you can see that we have the ability to mute and solo tracks, as well as to apply a variety of built-in effects. Bus routing and mixing tools are all available here. Typically, a voiceover will be mono, a dialogue track may be stereo to allow the positioning of the audio in the stereo field to reflect the position of the speaker on the screen. Fairlight works very well with this kind of model. These effects can be augmented with third-party plugins that use the VST or AU plugin standards that are supported by Fairlight as well as most other DAW applications. Unfortunately, it's not really aimed at satisfying the needs of a music composer. Generally, a promotional video that is created will consist of two stereo tracks, one for sound effects like footsteps or other foley elements, and one to accommodate the music track. A third audio track is dedicated to dialogue or voiceover. That's where Beckham Associates comes in. However, the addition to Fairlight of an old and fairly simple technology called MIDI would go a long way to expanding the tool into the realm of music composition. What is MIDI? MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. It's a simple serial data connection that can be used between electronic instruments as well as between those instruments and computers. There are also components referred to as MIDI controllers that are not technically instruments. Maybe you've heard of MIDI. You might think of MIDI as music played in a browser that sounds like this. However, this is also MIDI. Including the score, all of this was generated using MIDI. What follows here is a bit of MIDI history and a look at how MIDI works in general. If you're already familiar with this, there's a link in the description to skip this section. 
The lion's share of the definition of the MIDI specification was done by Dave Smith, one of the founders of the electronic music instrument company Sequential Circuits. Robert Moog, the founder of Moog Music, announced the MIDI standard in the October 1982 issue of Keyboard Magazine. The technology was first demonstrated at the NAM Music Trade Show in the winter of 1983 when a Sequential Circuits Prophet 600 synthesizer and a Roland JP6 were interconnected. The demo showed that anything that was played on the Prophet synth was reflected on the Roland instrument. Devices that use MIDI are connected by this 5-pin DIN connector that was used in the original spec, or on more modern devices is typically implemented using USB. A traditional MIDI device can be a computer, a synthesizer, or other keyboard instrument, a drum machine, or some other performance device such as a wind instrument controller like the Akai Iwi 5000. The latter allows musicians that play a wind instrument instead of a keyboard to record MIDI-based performances that are more native to the instrument that they are familiar with, such as a saxophone or clarinet. Up to 16 devices can be chained together using MIDI and each device is assigned a channel number so they can be individually controlled when chained together with other devices. The connections on most MIDI devices include three ports, in, out, and through. In takes MIDI data into the device. As long as the device's assigned channel matches the channel transmitted into the in, the MIDI device will perform the MIDI data that it receives through the in port. The out port is where the MIDI device will send MIDI data out to another device, such as another synthesizer or a computer. The through port allows the MIDI device to mirror the in data stream and output it to another MIDI device. This allows MIDI devices to be daisy chained together. While the MIDI spec defines a wide variety of data elements, at its simplest core is the concept of note on and note off. When a key on a MIDI device is activated, the device transmits a note on data packet, and when the key is released, it follows that up with a note off data packet. Using this MIDI monitor application, you can see when I press middle C on my synthesizer keyboard, it registers a note on message of C4 and another value that represents how hard the key was pressed, called velocity. When I released the key, it generated a note off message with a velocity of zero. Note off is always velocity zero. Computer software can be implemented to read and store these values along with appropriate timestamps on each message. The application can then send the same data back to the MIDI device mirroring the same timing that was used to send it to the computer. We can use this to record songs and compose music on the computer without actually recording any audio data whatsoever. This makes MIDI data very small and efficient instead of recording the actual sound. MIDI is implemented in all major DAW products on the market. Fairlight is an exception. The DAW that we use to compose music is Apple's Logic Pro. Here's a super simple composition that illustrates some things about MIDI as well as its differences from regular audio recordings. In the top track, we have a non-MIDI track that contains the actual audio recording from a synthesizer into the DAW. The next track has a live guitar fill that is also not MIDI. Below this, we have a drum intro track. This is the first MIDI track in the project, and this is followed by a MIDI track for the drums, a MIDI track for the bass, and finally, the bottom is a muted MIDI track for a synthesizer. We'll talk about that track in a moment. Here, I'll play a little bit of this composition. As you can see, Logic is a music-centric application. While it supports the use of video in the application, music is a primary focus. In this last section of the video here, we'll look at some of the features that a MIDI-enabled DAW will give us. Nothing that I'll show here is exclusive to Logic. All of these features are present in all modern DAW products. Looking at the track headers on the left here, we can see that we have similar tools to Fairlight, tools such as Mute and Solo. I also have a mixer screen that you can see here. At the bottom are track names, and above that we have Mute and Solo again, as well as the usual level sliders, routing tools, and effects that we can add just like in Fairlight. Logic offers a score editor that you can see here, 
To generate a score, the application has to use MIDI tracks. The computer has no way to know what note is being played in an audio track, but a MIDI track is fully understood, and as a result, a score can be generated from any MIDI track. As previously noted, this bottom track is currently muted, but we can see that it contains MIDI data in it. This track was used to send MIDI data out to an external synthesizer, and that was recorded into the top track here as an audio output from the synthesizer. The track has what is called a virtual or software instrument currently assigned to it. This is a software implementation of an instrument. In this case, it's a synthesizer. I'll solo this track so you can hear a little bit of it. If I play the top track, you can hear the final version of that and hear that it is the same melody as the bottom MIDI track. Double clicking on the track will open it up in an editor and we can have a closer look at the MIDI data on the track. It looks a little bit like a piano roll that you might find in a player piano. Each of these bars represents a MIDI note. If I click on one, it plays that note. Notice that they are all different colors. Colors are used to delineate the velocity of a given note. If I hover over this blue note, we can see the note is F4 and the velocity value is 9. Hovering over this yellow note here, logic tells me that it is a G2 note played with a velocity of 95. We can also edit the notes. I can click and drag them up and down in pitch or change their length or any other aspect of the note. This affords the user a great deal of flexibility in modifying or correcting the recording of MIDI. Closing the editor window, let's change the software instrument that's being used to a horn section and it will sound like this. or a piano. Or a string section. If we solo the audio track that is not MIDI with the guitar fill up here, we can see that it's using a distorted guitar. In a similar fashion to the software instrument, we can change the guitar amp and its effects and get a distinctively different sound even though it's not a MIDI track. As you can see, the addition of MIDI to Fairlight would offer the composer a set of tools that would allow for the composition of original scores for the video projects they're working on. I'd love to see Blackmagic add MIDI to Fairlight so that we would be able to do all of our work in just one application. Okay, that wraps up this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please click like as that helps other folks find it. And until the next video, take care.